started, as most things do these days, with a tweet. Well, two tweets actually, from Elon Musk back in May last year. He announced the performance specs for the Tesla Model 3 Performance, but he also announced it would be 15% quicker than a BMW M3, that it would outhandle a BMW M3, and that it would be any rival on track. Well, Elon, it's taken us nearly a year to get hold of these two cars, but we have. And we're here at the Thunder Hill Raceway in California, and the day of reckoning has arrived. Our two contenders then, the Model 3 Performance, a pure electric four-wheel drive super saloon, and the BMW M3, the original rear-wheel drive super saloon, driven here in standard non-competition pack trim to make the prices line up. Okay, so this is gonna be a battle on four fronts. We're gonna do a 0 to 100 to 0 acceleration and brake test. We're gonna set a lap time in each car. We're gonna have a big Top Gear driftability challenge thing at the end, but first, it's a straight quarter mile drag race. Oh, and to make sure it's a level playing field and to make sure it's all relevant to the vast majority of you out there, it will be I, a moderately skilled driver doing all the driving rather than some hot shoe racing driver. So you might want to stand back. And just at the point where a petrol car would be changing gear, it kicks again, and I've left that BMW for dead. What? I thought I was going to win. I didn't think it was going to be quite that easy. Anyway, first blood to the Tesla. All right, this should even things out. I know I'm quicker to 100 than him, but he's almost 300 kilograms lighter, so he's gonna be better on the brakes. Here we come, 100 miles an hour. Ah. Oh, that was close. I think I got it. It's about who stops first, of course. He stopped in less distance, which is interesting. Oh, I need numbers. Numbers, give me numbers. So, despite the BMW coming to a stop in a shorter distance, it was actually the Tesla that came to a standstill first. I'll work out the maths on that one later, but what it means is 2-0 to the Tesla. Next up, the hot lap. Right then, time for our fast laps. Tesla up first. Um, simple as that, really. I'm going to go as quickly as I can around the west course at the Thunder Hill Raceway. Um, track mode enabled, of course. None of this one-foot rollout or... Um, flying start nonsense, a standing start, because that's how it's done. Right, also plays into the Tesla's hands, doesn't it? Because it's so quick off the line, this thing. Anyway, enough jibber-jabber. Four-wheel drive off the line. <laughs> Warp speed. Right, here we go. Now, this is quite a tight little technical track we've got here. Quite a few tight corners. It does weigh quite a lot, so understeer is our enemy here but what's clever about this tesla model 3 is in this new track mode it increases the regen so actually if you lift off mid corner it tucks its nose in it tries to lift off oversteer a bit like an old french hot hatch which is genius right concentrate here's a tightening left hander yes and then on the exit just boot it oh and the way it shoots itself out the corner once you got the nose straight, it's absolutely incredible. Right, here's a blind crest. Caught me out earlier. Oh, don't lift there, Jack. Another hairpin right. Oh, bit of oversteer on the exit. And a tight corner to finish onto the main straight. Use all the track, track. Use all the track. There's the line. Come on. Oof. Well, it felt quite good. It was eventful. I'll give you that. Right then, 1 minute 34.07 to beat in the BMW running on something called petrol, apparently. Haven't heard of it myself. Um, right, so we've got the ESE and MDM mode. We've got the suspension. Uh, fully firm sport plus we've got the gearbox dialed up we've got the engine in sport here we go all right so manual ready <laughs> not 
not the best start in the world. Slight loss of traction. Um, oh, come on. Oh, trying to oversteer there at the first corner. Oh, this long left hander. Patience, Jack. Patience, patience, patience. And down the hill, listen to the engine roar. Interestingly, because the engine's so loud, you don't quite hear as much about what the uh, what the tyres are doing, what's going on with the tyres. In the Tesla, you can tell whether it's the front, left, back, right, squealing away, and that tells you a little bit about what's going on underneath you. Here, oh, it's just the noise from the exhaust. All right, here we go. Here's the tight left-hander. Tuck it in and straight on the brakes. Use those brakes. Down into second, here's the tight hairpin. You can feel the, less, uh, the lack of weight, nearly 300 kilograms lighter this thing. It just tucks in a little bit better than the Tesla. Weight is everything, of course. Not necessarily a light car, the BMW, but when the mass isn't there, you can really feel it. Here's the last corner. Ooh, trying to oversteer on the exit. There's the finish line. Right, did I do it? Did I do it? 134.07 to beat. Come on. 135.96. Ah, that's fairly comprehensive then. Electric wins that one. Has to be said, my drifting skills are intermediate at best, but this is science, people. So I'm prepared to take one for the team here. Um, BMW first because, well, it's kind of the original drift machine, isn't it? So I've got ESC off, I've chosen a corner, same corner for both cars, obviously, level playing field at all times, and here we go. Second gear, manual, everything off, give it a bung, see what happens. <laughs> Not bad, I can do better. That was good fun, actually, it has to be said, this M3, the non-competition pack especially, has a reputation for being a bit of a handful, for being a little bit spiky and throwing gobs of torque at its rear tyres when you're least expecting it. I um, have to say that broke away quite nicely. It was actually quite smooth. Maybe its reputation isn't deserved. Get a bit of a run up this time. Down into second. Turning in. Oh, a little bit better. A bit braver that time, wasn't I? Oh, whoever said this car was all bitey was chicken, frankly. It's fine. I'm going to have another go. I'm going to have another go. Oh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. And the left-hander for good measure, eh? Yes. You're not scary at all, BMW. You're great fun. The Tesla's going to have to work bloody hard to beat that i tell you what with its trick four-wheel drive track mode well done bmw good start okay so here's the big question will a tesla actually drift tesla says yes it's got track mode but it's not as simple as just bunging all that torque to the rear tires no there's very clever algorithms at work here it knows the steering angle the uh, the amount of throttle that you're applying the angle of the car the wheel spin at the rear it knows whether you're going for a big biffer of a drift or whether you've got a bit of oversteer that you didn't want so then it will send torque to the front and pull you straight. Lots of clever things going on. All I want to do is go sideways and let's bear in mind these ham fists but anyway here we go. I've been told you need to rotate it in a little bit on the regen so shift the weight and then oh, <laughs> things flying around everywhere. What was that? A sponge. Well, what can I say? That was definitely sideways. It wasn't simple. There was lots of stuff going on. There was lots of weight transfer. Uh, you do feel the weight of this car. It's low, low down, which is a good thing. When you get in the BMW, it feels like you're sort of perched up a little bit high. Your center of gravity is that much higher. All right, let's give this another go. Here's the corner. We'll come in a little bit more speed. Lift off. Feel the car rotate. There it is. And then you give it the bunk. <laughs> and it comes back the other way. All right, so I'm getting the hang of this. You feel it, you wait. 
for that point of rotation. And just as the car starts to turn, it's either just in oversteer or just neutral, then you give it the full throttle. Doesn't feel as natural as the BMW. Here we go, let's give it another go. Bit braver this time, bit more speed. Give it a chuck. There it goes. Now we're on. <laughs> Both ways. Mm, used all the curb there. Wow. All right, so it will go. Yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? Will a Tesla drift? Yes, it will. But this test was about what was easier to drift? What was more fun for someone like me in a controlled situation? Same corner for both cars. And hands down, the BMW has to win this one. I'm seriously glad that Tesla has done something like this. They've engineered in this sense of humor into their cars, the fact that people might want to take it on track and do a little bit of sideways stuff. But it always feels like that, like an algorithm, like the car doesn't necessarily want to go sideways, but the computers are telling it to do so. Right, what's that then? Three points to one for the Tesla. Bit of a landslide, big win for the Tesla. Maybe Elon isn't as crazy as we all think, eh? Okay? Well done, little Tesla. Elon will be proud. Let's have a little recap, shall we? It was quicker over the quarter mile. It was quicker 0 to 100 to 0. It set a quicker lap time, but there was a bonus point for the BMW at the end there in the drift off. So the Tesla is unquestionably faster, but is it more fun? I'm not so sure it is, you know. Don't get me wrong, that sledgehammer acceleration is one hell of a party piece, and the body control is pretty good too, but there's always a sense with the Tesla that you're fighting against the weight. It never feels truly nimble. If I had to have one last lap of that track, it would be in the BMW M3. Having said that, the fact that the Tesla is so quiet and comfortable and refined out on the public road, and it can do all that stuff on the track, is quite remarkable, really. The BMW is much less civilized. So it's a win with a caveat for the Tesla, but a win is a win. Anyway, isn't there supposed to be a brand new BMW M3 out later this year? Yeah, there is. Over to you, BMW.